let's talk about types of sampling strategies. That means, how are we going to go about getting a sample, getting people to participate in an, in an experiment or fill out a survey? How are we going to get people to, to do so? And there are two main categories of sampling strategies. There's what's known as probability strategies and non-probability strategies. So these top ones are the probability strategy, strategies, and we're going to look at the non-probability strategies later. Probability strategies are those ways of getting people to participate where people are randomly selected and therefore representative of the population in general. Non-probability strategies are where oh, you, you get whoever you can to participate, and but they might not represent the, the population nearly as, as well. Um, now, it, you would think, oh, we always have to do probability strategies so that we get a really good representation of the, uh, uh, the population. We don't want to just find out about some group. We want to find out about our whole population. That's the whole reason that we do uh, research. Well, it turns out that in psychology, probability strategies aren't nearly as impossible as, for example, in sociological studies. For example, in sociological studies, if you want to find out what percentage of the population is divorced, you need to get a really random uh, association, uh, selection of uh, people that represent the whole population so that you can find out what percentage are divorced and what percentage are, are not divorced. Now, in psychology, we don't we're not so concerned about counting and finding out what proportion of this population is like this and like this and like this. We're more concerned about how different variables relate to each other. For example, in psychology, we might uh, be concerned about is the probability of divorce related to one's educational level? Do educated people get uh, uh, divorced less or more often than less uh, educated people? And it turns out for studies like this, having a probability strategy isn't nearly as important. It's good to have one, but we're basically getting a bunch of data from people, finding out their educational level and finding out their, uh, uh, their, their, their marriage status and seeing if there's a relationship between the, the two. And we might oversample divorced people. We might oversample uh, uh, non-divorced people, but that's okay because we're looking at the at the relationship. So even though the non-probability strategies sound like they're a really bad I, I, idea, they work out fine most of the time. Um, now they're better if we can do a probability strategy, or if you use a non-probability strategy with a different sample. But um, the non-probability strategies uh, work okay. So, it, but in a perfect world, we'd have a we'd use probability strategies. So the gold standard is what's known as simple random uh, sampling. So that means you take everybody that's in your sampling frame. Now, what's a sampling frame? The, your sampling frame are all the possible people in the world that you could get data from. So if you work in an organization and you're studying the employees. The sampling frame might be all the employees. Or if you work in a large organization and it's got one division in America and another division in Germany, the sampling frame might be just the employees in America because you don't speak German and you couldn't make a survey for the, the German uh, employees. So the sampling frame is the potential of everybody who can somehow uh, possibly uh, um, participate in a study. Now, if you're using a convenient sample, which we'll look at down here in non-probability strategies, your, your sampling frame might be everybody in your social media or in your family's social media. If you get your family to recruit people through social media, that would be the sampling, uh, the sampling frame. And the more the sampling frame uh, corresponds to your population, the 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 more we have what's known as a probability strategy and in this simple random sampling it's basically you get the name of everybody in your sampling frame put them in a hat and pull out how many ever that you need and get the get data from those people now the advantage of this 
is that first of all, if you're doing an experiment where you randomly assign people to two uh, um, conditions, like training A or training B and who learns the most, um, this simple random sampling is, is great. It makes a real strong design. That's called internal validity. You've designed a test really well to find out which training works better, training A or training B. B. It also has good external uh, uh, validity. That means you can generalize it to the rest of the population, no problem, if the people were selected random from that population. Now, the disadvantage is that it is really hard to do, especially in uh, large organizations, and that's typically where you want to do some type of, of sampling. If you're in a group of five people, you just ask everybody's opinion. You don't have to do any complex statistics. You just get the information on those five people. But if you're studying an organization with thousands of people, there's a good chance that you couldn't get the names of all those thousands of employees. And if you were to randomly select 300 of them, good luck trying to get them all to fill out the survey because uh, sometimes it's like herding cats. It's just not going to happen. Um, so uh, that's the main advantage of simple random sampling. Now, something a little easier is what's known as systematic sampling, where basically, you once again, you get the list of everybody in the organization, and you just choose every 10th person. You don't have to put all the names in a hat or use a random number generator or something like that. You just choose every 10th person on the list. And the advantage to this is that it pretty much assures random selection, except in rare cases, because you might only get uh, one of the people named uh, Smith, and you're forced to jump over the other nine people named uh, Smith. Um, whereas if you were doing random, uh, simple random sampling, you might get both people named Smith. So it excludes some people, um, but, but usually it works pretty well. But again, the difficulty is it's really hard to do. The disadvantage is because you have to get the list of everybody and then those that you choose, you have to get them to participate also. Now, something similar is what's known as stratified random sampling. And in stratum, uh, stratified random sampling, you decide what categories of people do you need. So are you doing a study comparing men to women? Well, you need to get so many men and so many women, or so many people from this division and so many people from this division. So you get the list of everybody in division A and choose every 10th person, and the list of everybody in division B and choose every 10th uh, person. And the advantage to this is that it makes sure that there's enough in each category um, so that you can actually carry out the, the study. Because otherwise you might, maybe all the friendly people are in Division A, so everybody fills out the survey in Division A, but Division B, less friendly, and you end up with not enough data to, to make the comparison. So the stratified random sampling will help you make sure that you get enough in each group that you're looking for. Once again, it's uh, the disadvantage is that it's difficult. Now, the probability strategy that's the easiest is what's known as cluster sampling. So for example, suppose that I was doing a study of APU students. Now, there's no way I could get a list of all the APU students, but I could get a list of all the classes that are offered each semester. And I could randomly select some of those classes and contact the professor and see if I could give a, a survey in those classes. And so each class is what's known as a cluster. It's a group of students. And this is the, the type of random sampling that's uh, the, the, the type of probability strategy that's actually the, the easiest. But the disadvantages is that the members of two clusters may be very different from each other. Um, undergraduate PE majors are probably very different than graduate uh, org psych students. So that's going to be introducing extraneous variables into it. And we can't really say that we've done random uh, selection that way. Now, in the non-probability strategies, there's two main ones that we're going to look at. One is called convenience sampling. And this is what most people do for their uh, uh, their theses and what are done in, in many uh, uh, studies. You get as many people as you can to fill out the survey who fit the selection criteria. 
For example, the selection criteria might be they need to be full-time employees over the age of uh, 18. And so you send out an invitation saying, hey, are you 18 and over a full-time employee? Please fill out my uh, uh, survey. Now, demographically, those people are going to be like you. They're probably going to be very similar in age. Um, uh, they might be similar in gender. Um, uh, they, even though in general, women complete surveys more often than, than men do. do. Um, and they might be, uh, in terms of ethnicity and race, they might be uh, 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 very similar to you also. Um, but the advantage is, is that it's easy. And if you don't have any reason to believe that the psychological phenomena is going to be different uh, be between uh, demographic groups, then that doesn't matter uh, too much. But the, the limitation is, is that the generalizability, the external validity, how much it applies to other populations might not be true because maybe your friends really are different than uh, other uh, groups. Almost for sure, your friends are more educated than the, the average person. So that you need to always report the demographics of the people that participated so that we can get an idea of who was actually in this uh, study. And then similar to convenient sampling is quota sampling. And that's where you do convenient sampling for one or more groups. So like, suppose your study needs, uh, you're comparing males to females, and you need to get at least 50 males and 50 females. You do convenient sampling, but you count up how many males you get, how many females you get. And once you get the 50 males, then you shift over and focus on getting females to participate to make sure that you get the, the same number in whatever group. Now, that's pretty easy to do. But again, the external validity, its generalizability, may be a little bit limited. So these are an overview of different sampling strategies um, with the two main categories of probability strategies with random selection and non-probability where you're going for convenience and getting whoever you can to participate.